Hi, my name's Maria. I work at the DCR Quabbin Reservoir. And today I'm gonna to take you on a hike down one of the trails that's in Quabbin Park. This road once ran from Enfield Village to West Ware Village, and we call it Webster Road, but it had various names through the years. If you look behind me, you can see that it's a beautiful wooded road um, surrounded by trees and forest. But if we were here a hundred years ago, this road would have been a road that went past farm fields. And when we take our hike today, we're gonna look for signs of things that were here when this was part of Enfield, part of the towns in the Swift River Valley. And um, I like to call it, you know, history detectives who are looking for signs of things that were here before. So some of the signs of things we're gonna look for are pretty big. And what I'm showing you right now is a very obvious remnant of what was here before. And some of you might have some ideas of what it was. And we'll take, I'm gonna take a walk and look at it a little bit closer. And I also will have some historic pictures that will show you what it was before. But we can see that it's made of stone as we get closer. And it's pretty, it's pretty extensive. So what do you think that it might have been? So here's a picture of the house. Look at it closely. See if you see what I showed you that's left behind. And this was, house was owned by Henrietta Powers. And another picture, it's a little bit closer up. You can look for the stone foundation in particular. So I showed you the historic picture. And now you know that this was a house that was here on Webster Road. Um, and what we're looking at now is the cellar hole of the Powers House. If you look in the corner there, you can see the steps coming down. And the foundation that I showed you before was actually part of the porch. And if we look over here at the wall, see that big square hole? That's where one of the beams for the, for the floor would have been. So we'll take a walk across imagine that we can see where the porch was and again nice look at the cellar hole and we'll walk forward and then we're gonna look for something that's way smaller but it's also a sign of what was here before so the next sign of the past that we're looking at right now is much smaller than the big stone foundation and it's something that you might have walked past without even paying any attention to it. Remember that Webster Road was outside the villages and everyone here probably was a farmer and they had livestock. And this particular remnant that I just showed you is part of something really important for keeping your animals safe and protecting them. So look at it and tell me what you think. So some of you might have been able to guess that that is wire. It's metal wire, and it was once part of a fence. Um, and farmers started using barbed wire in the 1870s, and they used it specifically for pastures where they kept their livestock. So in this case, most likely cows, um, but sometimes sheep or horses. And the barbed wire was used to keep the animals in not so much to keep anything out because you didn't want your cows wandering around getting into other people's crop fields um, and destroying other people's food. Um, and so every year a farmer would go and in the winter lots of times and he'd remove young saplings or she would remove young saplings and repair the fences. But once nobody lived here anymore, there was no one to remove the young trees. And so over time, the trees actually grew around the barbed wire. So one of the really noticeable features when you take a walk along one of the roads in Quabbin Reservoir is all of the st stone that you see. And sometimes I think people might think these are foundations of buildings, but if you look at it more closely, you can probably guess exactly what it was used for. They were stone walls and stone walls are very, very common 
in farmland in New England. And some of you that live in houses that was former farmland, you may in fact have stone walls in your backyard. So it's a little bit hard to see because the ferns are growing up. But if you look closely through the trees, you can see a stone wall running down this field. But one of the things I've learned about stone walls in New England is you can tell what the fields were used for by looking at the stone walls that are left behind. In this case, this stone wall, it's not a tall one um, and it's made of bigger stones. So the chances that this particular area here, before this was the reservoir, would have been a pasture, probably for cows. Um, I can look around a little bit and see if I can find the remains of that other sign of a pasture that we talked about earlier. Maybe you can remember what that was. All right, here is another remnant of the past. It's similar to the one I showed you before. So just take a minute and think about what you think it might have been. It's a different shape and it's actually significantly bigger. And actually what this was, was a barn foundation. Foundation I just showed you belonged to this barn. It was owned by Clinton Powell, who lived down the road from Henrietta Powers. Barn foundations are much bigger than house foundations because barns are much bigger than houses. So when you walk down a forest road, here's the trail we've been walking on, lots and lots of trees. That's where I came from. Sometimes, for me anyway, especially in the winter time, it's a little easier, but still, it's a good time now. A tree like this will catch my eye and I look at that tree and that tree looks so much different than all the other trees around it. So take a minute and think about how is this tree different than the trees around it? So here's a different view of that same tree and it's a gorgeous tree. And one of the things you might have thought is that it's much bigger than the other trees around it. It's much wider its branches are spreading. Um, so we call that the habit of the tree. So the, the, the shape of the tree, it's called a habit. So you look at that tree, it's got lots of branches spreading out. You can tell it's big, it's, it's circumference. So um, the distance around it is much bigger than all of the trees surrounding it, which the trees surrounding it tend to be straight, going straight up, they don't have spreading branch, branches. So when I see a tree like that in the forest, I look at that tree and first of all, just by the size of it, I can guess, okay, that's a pretty old tree. And secondly, when I think about what the surroundings would have been like for a tree to grow that big, um, I know that it grew in a field by itself. It didn't have competition. So when I look at that tree, I think a farmer either planted that tree or left that tree in his field. So remember that farmers lived here and they grew a lot of different things. Um, and some of the things are still growing and I'm showing you a close up of a fruit plant. Those are the leaves. And when I step back, you can see all the vines. So you might've guessed that those were grapes and grapevines. They were probably planted by the Hanks family. This is the house that lay, they lived in along Webster road. So here I am on the same road. I went from West Ware to Enfield Village and I can still see some of the same signs we talked about. There's the rock wall, there's the big tree that marked somebody's property, and here's the road, but it disappears because now I am at the reservoir. And if I were here 100 years ago, and I could continue walking on the road and head to the left through those two hills, I would have headed into Enfield Village. And if I wanted, if I had continued, sort of gone northeast there, I would have ended up in Greenwich. So, but now I'm at the reservoir and all this area is filled with water. Remember they started clearing the valley in 1927 and all the houses were gone and the dam and the dike were built by 1939. And by 1946, this whole area of the valley was filled with water. 
And this is the water that 3 million people in Massachusetts drink. 48 communities in Greater Boston and three communities in our area. So Chicopee, Wilbraham, and part of South Hadley. So thanks for coming with me on my virtual field trip. I hope that you learned a little bit more about Quabbin Reservoir and the history here. Quabbin Park is the area that we are in. Um, the trail that I took a walk on is called Webster Road and it is open to the public. We do not allow dogs and this trail does not allow bicycles. If you come with your family, make sure to remember currently our public restrooms are not open and we ask everyone to make sure they have their face coverings like me and to keep a safe distance away from other visitors. Hope you guys have a great day.